All right, you guys, so here's the deal. I don't know if y'all can see coming up behind me. There he is, right back there. I got Les Johnson and his brother Jeff uh, from Predator Quest. They actually came here from Hastings, Nebraska yesterday, and I bought a couple of redneck blinds from him, and he decided to come over, help me put them up, show me how to uh, construct the, the, uh, the towers and put them up and everything, because you know, we hunt here on this property in Iowa quite a bit during the winter and it gets so darn cold. So, figured each year I'm gonna try to buy a couple blinds just to improve the property, make the hunting experience a little bit better. So today, I'm gonna show you guys how we construct and put up a tower blind, how I facilitate it, and how I make it, you know, a big part of our hunting strategy. Let's get to calling. Let's get to, let's get to setting up here. <laughs> what are we waiting on? Now here's the question. 10 feet in the air, you're gonna be able to see over this hill, right? That's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna get in the back of my pickup and stand up and see what it looks like. But yeah, I like this because they're funneling out right on that corner, coming right, right into this corner. Right. Big time. I know coyotes, I don't know deer. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> For those of you who do hunt, this is how we do it, maybe this will help you. For those of you who don't, I want you to see how much work goes into this. It's not just walking out here, climbing into a blind and shooting a deer. There's a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of thought, a lot of strategy. So, hang out with us and we'll show you how we set up a ground blind. Or, uh, oh, a ground blind in a 10 foot tower. Okay, what are you doing first, Les? We're putting uh, these four bolts, they mount to the, the platform, and we're putting these through, and once we get these tight, we'll put on the handrails to this, and then we'll tip the whole blind up and build the legs, put the legs on, and uh, it'll go fast from there. One of the secrets of putting this together is having one person just do nothing but put flat washers on bolts, and then separate a flat washer, lock washer nut. I can put these together in an hour, if everything's coordinated. Flat washer, lock washer, nut. Flat washer, lock washer, nut. Virtually every bolt nut is all the same. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm gonna use the wrong bolt or nut. It's all the same. There's very few differences and uh, it goes together pretty, pretty slick. And you wanna suck this down so that washer starts to really suck down. It actually bent it a little bit, and that's what you want. You want to bow it a little bit. We line this cardboard up because when we flip this up, we want this blind going down on the cardboard so we're not having weeds poke through the, the windows or anything like that. Just like that. There you go. What we do, we run two bolts down and two bolts in so your nuts are here and here. And if you don't put the ones in down first, you'll have to pull them out and have to redo them because you won't be able to get the bolt in the hole. You can, but it takes a lot of finagling. This way it's just quicker, it's easier. And then when you go to tighten too, you always run the socket on the, the nut side. Just like that. So when the rain or anything, it's gonna hit this and run down the top of it. Then we swing this around like that so we don't hit ourselves. So that's why you gotta keep them loose for Yeah, you gotta be able to bend all right. and push. When right. you can move and push and bend and okay, so this is just a straight cross member. Yep. <laughs> Is it cold out here, Jeff? It's just a little bit chilly. <laughs> Once we get started putting everything, all these legs on, we try to back a pickup square right into them so the person can stand up there and we can get everything lined up. It makes it a lot easier for us. Otherwise, you need a ladder or something. This way, you can just walk from side to side and you can tighten whenever we're all done. Now 
we go through, we just we grab stuff, wiggle it a little bit, make sure we got every bolt. You'll hear them wiggle. You'll hear them make a noise if we didn't get everything. Everything's tight. She's ready to go up. Now, we'll, we'll tighten this down because once we get it up in the air, there's no way of tightening this. So you've got to have this secure and then you just run this down through the center and then we'll run the anchor point. Cool. Now, what are you doing this for, Les? Trying to level her out. It's, it's not quite level. We want to make sure it's level before we anchor it down totally. And they got to go right in that slot right there. And how cool is that? You just run a pin through the bottom side of it, boom, and you're good. And you always tighten these up after. These feet, you wait till the ladder's where you want it, and then you tighten up the feet so that the ladder stays put. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. See everything. Now what we do is we run this down, and what I do is I start it with a shovel to get it started and get all the grass out of the way because these, uh, these augers will get caught in all the grass and you use the rebar that they give you and you start running this down. And if you want to anchor them even better, what I've heard is run a post hole digger from a tractor in here or dig it out and put some cement in here and this thing ain't going nowhere. See how tight it's, it's starting to draw down pretty quick here. Make sure there's no slack in her or down. What these are made for, you just take this, stick it in there, and just run her just like that. And I mean, it's, it's pretty tight already. We'll run her just a little tighter. Don't want to pull it too much. Just give it some solid, Solid footing. Look at that, boys. All right, you guys, so we're getting ready to put up our second blind. And I picked this knob, there's a big hill here. Big, nasty draw, there's a big draw. Uh, the creek bottom running back down there, that away. And then on the other side, it's all crop land, agriculture land. And I wanna be able to see down into the crops, down into the bottom, have a good 360 degree view in right here, any type of a west wind, northwest, southwest, due west, anything like that, be perfect. So it's freezing cold, but we're about to put up our second line. You know, Les, I really appreciate you helping out. Jeff, you too, man. Hey, you're welcome, bud. No, I mean, you know you guys, we're out here, and every year we try to do something to improve the properties. You know, Sarah doesn't like sitting in the, you know, terrible cold. And I know that that blind right there is going to be there for uh, whatever, 20 years, probably long after. I mean, who knows? Hopefully my kids get to sit in that tree stand or that, that blind and kill one. And just so you guys know, to let everyone know, I ain't sponsored by them. I paid for that thing just like everyone else pays for it. I just so happened to buy it from Les and you know, he wanted to come out here and, you know, show me how to set it up and help me set it up and be a part of this. I feel like days like today are special, you know? It's just a, an amazing night. Beautiful skies, cold, crisp. This is what deer hunting is all about. Outdoors, fellowship, friendship, camaraderie, hard work, dedication, and then and the end of it. Hopefully you get to kill a real nice deer, have some deer meat for dinner, baby. So, it's uh, pretty, pretty tickled. I mean, 
and I, I'm pretty tickled. Thank you all so much for being a part of our channel, of our lives, of the adventure, and of the story. This is Deer Meat for Dinner, and this is how we make it happen. The hunt will continue, but next time we're going to be sitting with our, uh, with our muzzleloader or shotgun net flying. You guys take care. We love you.